Hello, people of the internet. My name is Ekram Rossi Magic, and today I'm going to bring you the Monarch Should All Hero, or as I call it, the Bermuda Triangle uh, combo video. Uh, these are the three main combos. Remember, this is the three main combos that the deck primarily uses. Uh, these are all for going first, by the way. Uh, going second, you, you play like Monarchs. You just you do your card advantage stuff. Or you could actually do these combos going second, just you have an additional card and you can attack for damage. So the first combo I'm going to show you is a first turn Dark Law plus Durandal. And you need a Hero Lives, Dark Greffer, Erebus the Underworld Monarch, Instant Fusion, and a Monarch Spell or Track. Monarch Spell or Trap, uh, preferably Prime, because then you don't have to use Erebus to Foolish a Pantheism and not be able to banish it. So what you're going to do first is activate your Hero Lives, paying 4,000 life points to summon your Shadow Mist. Shadow Mist effect is going to activate. Assuming it doesn't get Veilard or something, you can search out your match change second. So Hero Lives is in the graveyard. Now what you're going to do is activate Dark Refer's effect by sending Erebus to the graveyard. And then you're going to get it back with Prime by discarding Prime and adding it to your hand. Then you're going to tribute these two monsters to summon it. Activating Erebus's effect Sending Pantheism and Escalation. You, uh, it doesn't matter which one you send, but you gotta send Pantheism. You just do. You're gonna banish Pantheism, revealing three Monarch Speller Traps. Uh, let's just say for the sake of human argument, you reveal three Tenacity, and you get a Tenacity. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna banish Escalation to Special Summon out your Prime from the Graveyard. You're going to activate Instant Fusion, paying 1,000. You're at 3,000 life points if you do this. Summon Guilty of the D-Knight. Overlay your two monsters. Artifact Durandal, and then you're going to Mass Change, Pitching Tenacity, targeting your Erebus, and turning it into Mass Hero Dark Law. So now, what you're going to do is, since you don't have any cards in hand, uh, Artifact Durandal isn't going to affect it. What you're going to do is, during their draw phase, you're going to activate Durandal's effect, and then you get to spin their hand back. They've drawn a new card, and then you get to trigger Dark Law. So they only start off with five cards. Now sure, that was your entire hand, but now the thing is, you can summon Prime next turn. If you draw a Monarch Spell or Trap, you can use your Erebus. If you draw a, a Rota, you can Rota for Edia, buy back your Pantheism. It's just a good turn one play, and because, uh, sure, your opponent can like out the Durndal and Darkla now, but they still have to out it. It forces them to have an out, and you possibly could have shuffled back their Regeki, or... You could have shuffled back their Dark Hole, you could have shuffled whatever. So that's combo number one. Uh, or, instead of just letting Dark Law take their hand apart, what you can do is negate their stuff. So, like, if you wanted to, if you decided to change the combo up a little bit, uh, I'm not sure exactly how you want to change up the combo, but if you could have it to where you leave a set spell or trap on board, Instead of making the Dark Law by leaving Tenacity in your hand with Erebus on board, you can use Durandal's effect to pop the Mass Chain second, and then in response to it getting popped with Durandal, you can chain it. So you make Dark Law that way, and uh, that way your opponent's effect is going to get fizzled, because now it's been changed to pop a Spell or Trap by Control. It's been targeted, so before the effect results, you chain it. And then you make Dark Law. So now your opponent has to deal with the Dark Law. So that's another way you can do it instead of doing it right away. But doing it right away means you get to loop their hand, which is pretty cool. So, again, combo number one. That's first turn Dark Law plus Durandal. For the second combo, you're going to need Foolish Burial, Shadal Falco, Dark Greffer, Instant Fusion, and Destiny Hero Malicious. It's a bit like the first combo, except you're going to end up with a really different board. And you're going to have a lot of cards in hand. So... First, what you're going to do is activate Dark Ruffer's effect by discarding Destiny Hero Malicious, summoning it to your board. And then you're going to normal summon your Shadow, Fal your Shadow Falco. I'm really tired. <sighs> Synchro summon a Stardust Charge Warrior. When it is Synchro summon, you get to draw a card. So we're just going to take this card, put it face down, and that's the card you've drawn. So now what you're going to do is activate Malicious, as a malicious effect. Banishing it to summon Malicious from the deck. Next, you're going to overlay your two level 6 monsters into your Constellar Ptolemy M7. 
Next, what you're going to do is activate your instant, or not your instant fusion, your foolish burial, sending any monster you want from your deck to the graveyard. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to send my, uh, uh, you can send any monster, because what you want to do is use M7 to get the monster back. So if you wanted to, you could foolish burial Aether, and then use M7, dis uh, detaching Mally to put Aether back, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to send... <sighs> send a Shadal Spermata, triggering it, sending a Shadal Beast. So when Shadal Beast hits the graveyard, you get to draw another card, so you could possibly extend the combo. So now I'm going to activate M7's effect, detaching Mally. It doesn't matter which one you detach, just if you detach Mally, you can add another level 6 on board. So if the cards you drew are, say, like Mass Chain 2nd and a card you don't want, then you can make Dark Lock, which is pretty cool. So uh, I'm going to get back my Shadow Falco because simply if I want to, next turn I set it, and then when my opponent goes for Battle Phase, if it's not destroyed yet, uh, I can get my Squamata or my Beast back and either pop a monster or draw some cards. But you have to wait because you've already Normal Summoned it this turn, so that kind of sucks. But now you've added that back to your hand. You banish the Malicious. To special summon the third malicious. Then you're going to activate instant fusion for your elder entity Norden wherever I put the bitch. There she is. You're going to activate her effect to bring back Shadal Spamata. Or you can bring back Dark Craft. It doesn't really matter since Shadals will not get their effects from being detached. Because it is a cost to activate the monster's effect, not an effect, so it will not trigger. And then you will make Abyss Dweller with 2200 attack points. So now that combo has left you, you essentially went plus one because you started off with, technically it's a four card combo, so technically you still have a fifth card in your opening hand. So technically that combo went you plus two, while the first combo didn't net you any advantage, it just either made your opponent lose a card by Dark Law, or it negated a, an effect that they needed to go off. So this combo is usually the one that I go for first turn, just so that I'm plus two. And if one of my cards is, say, like, if I have Aether Stormforth, then I get to just go nuts on my opponent, where they literally just can't play. Because not only do I have an M7 on board that's really big, they have to out it, and then when they out my board, I can just chain Aether, get a Karaz out, and draw two cards before my field gets destroyed. So that's the second combo. On to the third and final combo. At least I'm going to show you in this video, because there are a lot of, like, there's just a bunch of interactions, really, that, like, the deck can do. So the third combo is Instant Fusion, Edia, and Aether. If you open these three cards, you kill your opponent turn one. You, they're literally just dead. Unless they have Battle Fader and or Swiss Scarecrow. So what you're going to do is normal summon Edia, the Heavenly Monarch. The Heavenly Squire. Use her effect. Summon Eidos from the deck. Activate Eidos' effect for an extra normal summon. Tribute summon out Aether. Use Aether's effect. Sending Pantheism and Prime. You have to send those two or else the combo just does not work. There's my Prime. Now where did my Pantheism go? It's probably in this giant pile of cards. Yep, there it is, Pantheism. And then you're going to special summon Erebus from the deck. Uh, again, you have to go second for this combo because you can't attack going first. But honestly, if you went first, you could actually end up with a board of Alsei Dur uh, Durandal. But I'm going to show you the kill first, and I'll do the same combo, but showing you how to go first. So anyway, so you have these guys on board. Uh, you banish the Pantheism to summon out Prime. Hmm. Or if you have another monarch in hand, banish it, triple tenacity, reveal the monarch, uh, get tenacity, activate it, search. But if you don't have one, then this is the way to do it. Then you're going to activate instant fusion, summoning Giltia from the extra deck, uh, overlaying prime and Giltia for Shark Fortress. What Shark Fortress does is by detaching an material, you target a monster you control and they can attack twice. So I'm going to target my Erebus. Erebus attacks two times, Aether attacks, that's game, or Shark Fortress and Erebus. So that's the OTK. So now I'm going to show you what it's like just to go first and not have, and if you're going first and you don't, uh, and you can't attack. So you do the same thing, normal summon effect, summon Eidos, tribute off your monsters for Aether. Aether sends Pantheism and Prime to the graveyard. Again, if you have a Monarch, you banish Reveal 3 Tenacity. If not, you just summon it out. Oh, Aether summoned Erebus, by the way. You're going to activate Instant Fusion. So you summon out the Giltia. And then you create Durandal. You can leave the board as it is, 
put your Erebus back in your hand, or what you can do is XYZ and make, uh, I'll say the Sylvan High Protector in defense mode. Uh, it has 3,200 defense points, which is really big. And then you can detach, call the top card of your deck. Uh, let's just, uh, I'm going to shuffle this up. Uh, let's just say that I call the top card of my deck as, uh, let's see, what would it most likely be? Uh, let's just say I call Shadal Squamata. It's Edia. So what it does is it goes to the graveyard. Good night, son. Night, Mom. Uh, and then since a card went from my deck to the graveyard, I can bounce a card on the field, but I'm not going to do that. So this combo, if you're going first, just has a 3200 monster defense on board, uh, artifact urinal, and you still have two cards in hand. So you could, like, let's just say for the sake of human argument that it is, it doesn't really matter. It can't be Dark Ref or Mally because you can't use his effects. Uh, the two cards, uh, I guess it doesn't really matter. I guess it could be like Foolish and because Foolish Mally, Special Mally. I'm trying to figure out a way of where I can get two sixes on board. I can't think of a way. Yeah. So like, you still have two cards in your hand. You're, uh, if one of them is a Spell or Trap, you have Artifact Urinal. So that is it for this video. Again, there are plenty more just interactions. You f like for your foolish burial squamata, send Falco, summon Falco, stuff like that. Uh, the deck is very straightforward. Once you play it for a while, you understand the interactions. Uh, those were some cool combos that I found when playing the deck. So uh, leave any of the combos that you guys have found when playing the deck in the comment section down below, and I'll feature them in another video. Uh, my name is Nick from City Magic. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time. My house is still going. Stop. Stop. Stop.